functions and transformations. How do they work? Let me show you guys the general rules and how we can apply it to this tougher question where it says the graph of y equals x cubed plus 6 is translated four units to the right. The translated graph has the equation y equals g of x. Work out g of x. Give your answer in the form x cubed plus ax cubed, x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c. So you're going to be doing some expans expanding brackets here as well. Now, what we need to do is we need to establish what's the difference between having something like f of x plus 3, f of x plus 3. Like, what transformations do these do to the graph? Well, I'm going to do a table for you to help you understand. So let's look at some x values. So let's just keep it simple. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's look at f of x. Okay? f of x. So when x is 1, you'll have f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, f of 4, f of 5. Okay? So we don't know what the functions are, but if we did, we'd just sub in those x values. What happens when we have f of x, I don't know, plus 1? Okay? What ends up happening? If I sub in x is 1 into here, I'll get f of 1 plus 1, which is f of 2. f of 2. When I sub in 2 here, I get f of 3. f of 4. f of 5. f of 6. Okay. So, these are actually the exact same as the ones above, but they have been moved to the left by 1. You can see that. We are moving to the left by 1. So, what that means is, this graph of f of x plus 1 is f of x shifted left by 1. You're literally taking this graph and you're moving it to the left by 1. You're moving that way. It is a translation by 1. So, f of x plus 1, students think, oh, if you add 1, you just shift it to the right by 1. You're adding 1 to all of the x values, but that's not how it works. You're looking at the original and saying what you need to do to the original to get to these values. Okay? Now, if I had a plus 1 outside, like this, then actually it's the exact same as all of these. So if you put f of x uh, 1 into here, you'd get f of 1 plus 1. Then here you would have f of 2 plus 1, f of 3 plus 1, etc. It's just the exact same, but we're adding 1. Remember, these are going to be the y values, okay? So we have the y value of the original, we're just adding 1. All it's doing is it's moving it up by 1, okay? So, in general, if we have f of x plus a, yeah, in particular I'm saying a, where a is a positive number, let's just keep it simple, let's just say a is strictly positive, so x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, we are, the technical phrasing is you'd say it's a translation, I'm just going to say translation by the vector, then you do a column, and you're going to go to the left, so minus a, and nothing on the x, uh, nothing on the y, okay? So that is a translation. If you have f of x plus a, that is a translation by the vector. Here you're moving up by a. You're doing as it's told, okay? Same thing as if I had f of uh, 2x, okay? So what we're establishing here is that anything inside that's affecting the x is doing the opposite of what you think. So this plus a actually means you're minusing a. f of 2x, you're not doubling the x values, you're dividing them by 2. We call that an enlargement. That's an enlargement. Scale factor, so here would be a half. And then you would say parallel to x. Yeah, parallel to the x-axis. If it was 2f of x, this is an enlargement scale factor of 2 because the y's do as they're told. You're literally moving that up by a, okay? So you're multiplying all the y values by 2 parallel to the y-axis. 
The last ones you would need to know at GCSE is if you have f of minus x and minus f of x. Okay? f of minus x means, remember that means minus 1 times, isn't it? It's doing the opposite, you're dividing by minus 1. But dividing by minus 1 is the same as timesing by minus 1. So either way, you're taking all your x values <coughs> and you're multiplying them by minus 1. So if you have positive x values and you times it by minus 1, they're just going to go on that side. That's a reflection in the y-axis. So this is a reflection in y-axis. I guess you could say it's doing the opposite. But anyway, minus f of x, you're taking your y values and you're multiplying them by minus 1. So I'll go down here. So that's a reflection in x. Okay? So that's kind of in a nutshell all of them. This one is a left a, this one up a, this one you're dividing by 2, this one you're timesing by 2, reflection in the y-axis, reflection in the x-axis, and those are the ones you need to know for your GCSEs. So always remember, guys, that when it comes to the x, so inside the bracket, it's doing the opposite of what you think. So let's apply it to this question. So we have an actual function, and they're saying it was shifted to the right this time. So if I let f of x be x cubed plus 6, then what does it mean to shift to the right? Is that f of x plus 4? Are you adding 4 to all the x values to move this way? No. We have to imply the opposite. It's actually f of x minus 4. Because x minus 4, you think, oh wait, you're minusing 4 from all the x values, but you're doing the opposite. You're adding 4. So, our g of x is just f of x minus 4. So what we're doing is we need to find that equation. What we're doing, we are replacing all the x's with x minus 4. So wherever I see x, I'm replacing with x minus 4, similar to composite functions. So wherever I see x, I'm changing it to x minus 4. Be careful. You can't just write like this. Yeah, you need a bracket. It's a substitution. And now we need to expand that triple bracket. Okay, so we're going to do this the GCSE way. In A-level maths, we would use Pascal's triangle. I always recommend we do the second brackets first. It just means you have less brackets overlapping each other afterwards. So we have x squared. x times minus 4 is minus 4x. Then we have another minus 4x. Minus 4x minus 4x is minus 8x. Minus 4 times minus 4 is plus 16. Plus 6. Now we're going to do x times everything. x times x squared is x cubed. x times minus 8x is minus 8x squared. x times 16, 16x. Then we have minus 4x squared. Instead of writing everything this way, I actually write underneath so then we can add the columns. Minus 4 times x squared is minus 4x squared. Minus 4 times minus 8 is plus 32x. And then minus 4 times 16 is minus 64. Let's add the columns, x cubed, minus 8 minus 4 is minus 12, x squared. 16 plus 32 is 48, x minus 64. Then don't forget, we have plus 6. Then we just simplify that, and there's our answer for g of x. x cubed, minus 12x squared, plus 48x. Minus 64 plus 6, it's just the same as doing 64 minus 6, which is what, 58? But you can never be too sure these days. Uh, that is 8, right? 58, yeah. So it's going to be my, minus 58. And there you go. So that's how you solve this question. But obviously, guys, you needed some theory behind it to understand what's going on. But if you did learn something new today, guys, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button. Subscribe for more mass content. And if you're interested in more GCSE uh, learning experiences, aka my courses, link is in the description. Um, where you can learn more details. And feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page if you're going to submit your own questions and get feedback from my community. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Nice.